Ryder and his pups had just returned from the Halloween party after rescuing the mayor and the others from the runaway ship. The moon was at its highest point in the night sky, shining its brilliant light. As Ryder walked through the entrance of the lookout, he yawned as he removed his golden night helmet. Well, that was certainly an interesting Halloween, he said. I'll say, added Rocky. And what was with that ghost ship flying past the moon? Rubble shivered at the mention of the ghost ship. Don't talk about that! That was too scary, he said while taking off his costume. Dude, I don't even know if I'll be able to sleep tonight, said Zuma, getting equally scared. I had completely forgotten about that until you brought it up, Rocky, said Sky, looking a bit terrified. D don't worry, Sky. S Super Chase is here to protect d you, Chase told her, sounding very unsure of himself. Marshall covered his eyes while leaning toward the ground, shivering. C could Super Chase protect me too? He said shakily. Ryder smiled sheepishly, watching his pups get worked up over something that he was sure wasn't a big deal. Guys, calm down. There's a logical explanation to what we saw. There's no need to lose any sleep over it, he tried to reassure. And what's that? Asked an unconvinced rubble. Ryder rubbed his chin, thinking quickly of a calming answer. Well, it could have just been a cloud. A cloud shaped exactly like a ghost ship? Rubble argued. I'm with Ryder, chimed in Rocky. I'm sure it was just a cloud. With all that went on tonight, it makes sense that our imaginations would run a little wild. But dude, we all saw it. It's pretty unlikely that all of us would imagine the same thing, Zuma countered. Not entirely. Sometimes our minds can perceive certain figures and images the same way another's mind would, explained Ryder. Exactly. Thank you, Ryder. Rocky co-signed smugly. Yeah, I'm still not convinced, said Rubble. Yeah! Marshall screamed, diving behind Chase, and clung to his leg, shivering. Marshall, it's just lightning, said Ryder. But the skies were clear not too long ago. That's too freaky, replied Sky. The five pups began to talk amongst each other with frightened faces. Rocky and Ryder turned to face each other before huffing. Ryder then faced the group again. I'm sure after a good night's rest, we'll all be able to process things more logically, he said. R Ryder, can I sleep in the lookout tonight? Please, please, Marshall asked, giving him the puppy dog pout. The other four pups joined him as they faced Ryder and whimpered. Rocky rolled his eyes. Ryder stroked his chin. He knew it wouldn't help the situation if he told them that they had to sleep outside. All right, you can all sleep in here tonight, he replied. The five breathed a sigh of relief. Thanks, Ryder, said Marshall as he licked Ryder's hand. Well, I guess I'll be the only one sleeping in my pup house tonight, Rocky said smugly while walking off. If I see the ghost, I'll be sure to yelp for help, he joked while the lookout doors closed behind him. Well, pups... The rest of you should prepare for bed as well, Ryder said. The five pups slowly made their way to the entertainment room of the lookout. Ryder walked to the entrance doors of the lookout and stepped out. He looked to the sky and noticed that many clouds were starting to gather and that the moon had a rather eerie red tint to it. That's weird. I don't recall the weather forecast mentioning a storm for tonight, he thought to himself before returning into the lookout. Rocky was inside of his closed pup house, preparing to lie down. His costume was messily placed on the floor. He turned on a little nightlight before sitting on the floor and getting lost in his thoughts. As much as he didn't want to admit it, the other pup's counter-arguments on what they all saw had really gotten to him. He wanted to be brave 
and believed that it was all their imagination, but something kept tugging at the back of his mind, telling him otherwise. He felt lonely and secluded, locked inside of his pup house. He wanted to join the others, but after making fun of them while trying to cover his own fear, he simply didn't have the nerve to face them. Ryder's right, he said to himself. Maybe all we need is a good night's rest. He turned off the main light, leaving only the night light on. Within minutes, he drifted to sleep. Mayor Goodway was finishing off the last of some Halloween candy while sitting in a recliner, watching TV with a frightened expression. Oh, this late night Halloween movie marathon is going to keep me up all night, she stated worriedly before she continued to stuff her mouth. As she crunched on the next pieces of candy, the TV and power within her house shut off. Mayor Goodway jumped with eyes darting back and forth across the room. Ch Chicoletta? Are you messing with the fuse box again? The mayor questioned. Those who gaze at the moon as I pass shall soon find that night to be their last, uttered a mysterious voice. Who? Who said that? The mayor asked as she became more uneasy. The sound of breaking glass coming from the kitchen was the only response she received. She was now in a complete panic. Wearing only her nightgown, she made a dash for the front door. Once her hand touched the doorknob, she began to call out to her beloved purse chicken. Chicoletta? Chicoletta? She called. Mommy's leaving. We need to get out of here. To the mayor's displeasure, there was no response from Chicoletta. She pulled out her cell phone and turned on the flashlight feature. Chicoletta? She called once more, her eyes searching the area. She moved the path of the light to the direction of the kitchen. She saw what looked to be loose feathers and gasped. She slowly crept closer to the kitchen, heart beating rapidly. Ch Chicoletta? Are you in there, sweetums? The light shining from the cell phone was beginning to shake within her grasp. She stepped one foot into the kitchen and began to move the path of the light to the left. When she caught sight of something, she instantly froze and dropped her phone. What she caught sight of was Chicoletta's head, covered in blood, with glass shards lodged in her neck, eyes, and face. The rest of her body was under the debris of a dish cabinet that had somehow detached from the wall. The mayor screamed a scream that seemed to echo all throughout Adventure Bay. Well, hello there, my horror crew. I hope you enjoyed today's narration. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and click that bell. As you see right next to me are my social media links. They will be down in the description below if you want to check them out. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Have a scary day, my horror crew. <laughs>